In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to create an ADF application based on data coming from eBusiness Suite. First of all, we're going to create a new Fusion web application, and we're going to have two projects: one for the model or the, the business services, and the second one for the UI. In the business services, we're going to use a ADF business components based on an active database connection that I have to my eBusiness Suite database and I'm connecting the through the apps user directly so please read the blog in terms of recommendations connecting to the blog user I'm gonna create a read-only view object which is going to just query a database table from my eBusiness Suite instance so I have a query here query uh, that I created previously it will bring all the different attributes coming from the query and I can finish I also create an application model which is uh, what it will expose uh, the different view objects or the different views to my UIs and we're gonna call it employee service now I'm gonna um, do a, a little bit of uh, makeup or I'm gonna just uh, model my different attributes so the first thing I'm gonna do is to actually create a new attribute based on the data that I already have So I'm going to create a new attribute and this attribute is going to be a calculated attribute but basically what I'm going to do is transform the existing salary uh, that regularly comes as a, as a string I'm going to convert it into a double and then I can you know uh, create some UI hints on top of that so it uh, I specify that the salary is a currency and I I specify the, uh, the label for this attribute. Now I'm gonna hide out the attribute that comes from the query so it's not exposed to my UI and now I'm gonna create a new query or view object which will help me out to sort the different salary types coming from this table so basically I have a wage and I have salary uh, employees that I'm querying and with this I'm going to basically just determine these two types of of compensation and what I'll do with this uh, specific view is not I'm not going to expose it to my uh, uh, UIs but rather what I will do is just use this uh, couple of values to create a list of values on my base view object. So I'm gonna select a list of values. I'll specify the new view that I just created. Pick the attribute that is coming from this query. Make sure there is a choice list defined and it's also up to uh, you if you want to leave the first row blank okay save everything and now the last thing I will do is to create a find by query or a where clause that will help me sort the employees according to their salary type so I create this uh, filter condition and the attribute that I will sort by would be the wage or salary and I will base this where clause or find by clause uh, on, a on a regular bind variable
it is also uh, recommended that once you define your business services, you run the application module and test out all your business services. For the purpose of the demonstration, I'm gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and create directly the UI. So I create a JSPX page which will contain the different UI elements. I'm gonna select some layout, a predefined layout. Okay, it's one of the nice features of um, that we included into J Developer. Gonna make some room here. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of layout components. So let's first add, add a title. And now I'm gonna create three regions. Oh well, two regions uh, in the upper part, and then a, a sec a third region below this panel dashboard. So I specify the height of the panel dashboard and the number of columns and how is it is going to resize and I add the two panel boxes which will be the containers of the specific elements in the UI. On one of the panel boxes I'm going to use the find by uh, criteria that I d previously defined on the business services. So this is my collection of employees and I'm gonna open it up, go search for the name criteria, look for the one that I defined and create a UI component called the query table component. I'm going to uh, move the new salary up just to show you that we can reorder uh, the data that is coming regularly from the from the uh, business services and now I have uh, one my first region already defined so I'm going to uh, just rename the actual um, uh, well first hide out some of the elements within the query which I don't need at this point so notice that they are being getting hired out and also I will rename that a uh, uh, query uh, sorry I will rename um, the labels that come ready by default so in the first area I will have employee data second region or second area of content I will I will have some salary elements. I will create a ADF data visualization um, graph. So with this graph I can re you know reuse same data coming from the business services, salary, name, title, first name, last name, and I'll create a, a nice graph that will display the salary information. I'm gonna add some um, makeup to this graph so I will add some animation and uh, animation on display and also some uh, rollover behavior whenever the mouse is uh, rolling over one of the graphs or one of the graph uh, bars within the within the graph. I'll add the dynamic rate resize so it, it will adjust automatically to this uh, size of the container and now I will create my last area of content. So for that I'm gonna uh, create a container and within the container I will add a geographical map. So I'll just create that uh, re area of content. I will rename that as the employee location. and then I'll take my collection of uh, employees and I'll drag and drop it over and select geographical map with point and team. I'll define a connection to a, a specific server so keep in mind that uh, 
if you already have an application server uh, Oracle application server you have already a in a small instance of the, this geographical map uh, case I'm also using a public uh, server that is, is available for anyone to use for testing purposes and I'll create the connection then I'm gonna use the international address format so I can specify some of the elements coming from my table and bind them directly into the uh, expected elements that the map will use to identify where the locations are I add the label information so whenever the one of the points that will be, will be highlighted within the map uh, in this case I'm selecting the last name and I'm adding within the information that will be exposed the last name of the employee. Having all of this, all that is left is to add some interactivity to my application so I will add a, a couple of properties called the partial triggers to my map as well as to my graph and with this property I'm basically selecting the query component which is the one on the first region as the one that will trigger an event that uh, will determine uh, this or will enable the other two regions to re-render um, re uh, reacting to this event so basically whenever I search for or, or, or I query something on my data database side uh, this the graph as well as the map will be uh, repainted or re-rendered within the UI without the need of refreshing the entire UI now this is our page initially we don't get any we don't have anything because the query is not being fired up yet if we send the results as empty we'll get all the different employees and uh, given that there is different like during different salary or wage they are not very comparable so when we take the salaries are basically on the uh, thousands um, and then when we take the wage is basically hourly wage so that's why we didn't see the other four graphs but now if we adjust the uh, measure measurement then we can see that and we also see the different information being displayed on the map the highlight behavior on the, on the graph and the animations and data change and also um, the information contained within the graph thank you